All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, AP Evolved, Annual Six-Figure Savings and Rebates on Accounts Payable from OSV and J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, my name is Brooke Arnett, and I'll be your event facilitator. Your moderator, Jeff Miller, will introduce you to our speaker shortly, uh, go over the agenda, and anchor our discussions. But before I turn things over to him, I'm going to go over the basic event information with you. First, all phone lines have been muted to reduce background noise and interference. This does not mean, however, that we don't want you to participate. So at any point, as you think of questions or comments for any of our panelists, please post them to host via the chat feature. Uh, to open chat, if it's not already, you're going to hover over the bottom of your screen where the menu options populate, and you're going to click on that conversation bubble icon. You can also email us questions during the webinar at, at any point to marketing at onesourcevirtual.com listed here. Um, we'll address all your questions and comments during our Q&A portion at the end of the event. And finally, this webinar is being recorded. It will be made available along with the deck 48 hours after today's live event. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Jeff Miller, Director of Communications, to get us started. Hey, Brooke, and thank you. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Very exciting discussion in store for you today from both OneSource Virtual as well as we have in house today, JP Morgan. So, really excited to bring to you, I think, what's going to be kind of a game changing discussion for many of you. Let me cover the agenda first. Uh, I am going to spend about two minutes framing our discussion with some finance and accounting services offerings from OneSource Virtual offered for Workday customers. So I'm going to take about two minutes to do that, and then we'll place today's solution discussion into that broader conversation for the majority of our time today. Uh, I'll invite the panelists, our featured guests today, to introduce themselves, uh, and then we're going to jump right into my Q&A with our panelists. Now, again, as Brooke said, be sure to be uh, typing in your own questions because we're going to leave plenty of time at the end for your questions, but we want to make sure we get to them. So type those into the chat so that Brooke can be moderating that and uh, making sure that we pull those questions into our discussion. So before, again, before we get to introducing our guests, I want to talk about our finance and accounting services offerings from OneSource Virtual. And you'll see that we have uh, unparalleled choices when it comes to our finance and accounting offerings for Workday customers. Um, first, on the invoice side, we offer invoice imaging as a standalone service, or you can choose our managed AP solution, which bundles invoice imaging plus AP automation. That's on the left-hand side of your slide, the invoice services side of our procure to pay finance and accounting services. Now, on the right hand side of your slide, uh, the supplier side, we offer supplier setup as a standalone service and then filling out our standalone offerings in our accounting uh, finance and accounting services is invoice pay plus supplier management. It's a long title, but it really it deserves that many words. It's that rich and robust. And that's the solution that's powered by JP Morgan. And that's really going to be the focus today of our conversation and our webinar. For most customers, this one offering results in six figure annual savings and rebates. And we're going to tell you how today. Now, if you want it all, we have our full suite of finance and accounting services bundled with our premium AP solution. So it gives you kind of a, a, a to frame our conversation today. We're going to really drill down into this invoice pay plus supplier management solution today. But I wanted to frame it by placing it into the broader finance and accounting solution uh, offerings that OneSource Virtual offers for Workday customers. Okay. Now, let's get to what we're really here for, and that is our featured guests, our panelists. Let me first invite them to unmute themselves and go ahead and turn their cameras on. And first, we're going to meet Prerna. Uh, Pre uh, I think you can go to the next slide. It's going to have our pictures up, I think, of our featured guests. Now, Prerna, uh, if you would unmute yourself, turn your camera on. Pre we, we got an upgrade to our webinar just two days ago because Prerna started the week as our corporate controller. And now she's our corporate controller and vice president of finance. So let me publicly congratulate you on uh, that well-deserved title, Prerna. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what we need to know about you as we listen to you over the course of the next hour. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, sound okay? Sounds great. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, I am Prerna Sachdeva, the corporate controller at OneSource Virtual. Been here with the company for over a year and a half and uh, started my career at Deloitte as an auditor, spent six years and more in industry after I moved out from uh, Deloitte before I came here at OSV. And uh, super excited to be on this panel as our first, the first customer 
uh, of this pretty awesome, uh, you know, product offering. At the same time, there's a, I mean, it's a beautiful day. I am excited about, you know, having put on some makeup today. It's been a while, right? Um, I have a decent shirt on. So, and most excited about celebrating my uh, pandemic puppy's first birthday today. So, Jeff, too oh. bad, uh, or you have really been invited. Too bad we're still in a pandemic. Oh, we're going to miss out on that party. Yeah. Hey, you look great too. Hey, I did my hair today for this webinar. So uh, thank you. You look, you look fantastic uh, and welcome and really excited to hear everything that you have to share. John Bax, um, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, so I'm John Bax. I'm the CFO here at OneSource Virtual. I've been here close to five years. I uh, have been the CFO of multiple kind of middle stage, some, some larger companies as well. Um, from a background perspective, I spent about a decade at Ernst & Young. That was about 30 years ago. I hate to say that. Uh, and spent about five years at Walmart. I ran strategic planning for Walmart and was also CFO Walmart.com back when it was formed in uh, 2000. Um, personal stuff, I don't know, Jeff. Uh, no makeup today, no filters. Going all natural, if that's okay. Perfect. Spent as yep. much time on my hair as you did. Excellent. <laughs> well, welcome, John. Thank you for being with us and really look forward to hearing from you today. Uh, Greg Kerwick from JP Morgan. Again, very honored and privileged to have you joining our webinar today. Greg, tell us a little bit about yourself. Great. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'm managing director with JP Morgan. I've been with the firm for 30 years, uh, all in the payment space through lots of different iterations from product to sales to uh, strategy and and Currently, I head up our product solution sales team, so that represents all of our different products in the wholesale payment space and working with clients such as OSB and many others on how can we really help transform their business, not only execute payments and the likes of that, but really help change the business model and deliver value at the top line as well as the bottom line level. Uh, personally, I have four kids, age 15 to 25, and uh, I had many of them out during the, the um, prior to the pandemic. I had them all back again during the pandemic, and now I'm kind of half and half right now. So, uh, looking forward to to this event and 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 answering as many questions as possible for for this audience. So I'm going to start with my first question, Greg, and that is I'm also a collector of old books, and I see over your shoulder you have a small collection of old books. Is there a story behind this? Uh, there's a small story. I, I love to collect old books. So I've got uh, Shakespeare's Complete Works, original gold uh, bound, which is awesome. I've got two books that are 300 years old that sit behind me. Um, so I love to collect them, although I can't say I've read any of them. <laughs> love it. Well, thank you again for being with us today and, and uh, for being willing to join us and share your story. Perrin, I'm going to pitch my first couple of questions to you. You are the corporate controller. And again, Vice President of Finance at OneSource Virtual, and you use our invoice pay solution. Now, it's the same solution that we offer to our customers, but we also use it internally. Talk about that solution at its most basic level uh, that even somebody without a finance degree might be able to understand it. What is it? Sure. So, you know what, let me try to explain this from a before and after perspective, and hopefully that will make sense. And to keep things simpler, I will refer to myself solely as an OSV customer and as a customer and OSV as a service provider, because that's really how we, how we did this, right? So prior to invoice pay and supplier management coming into the picture, we were really a managed AP user, which means once the invoices were approved and ready to pay, uh, the ball was really in our court. And then we were responsible for you know, making the payments. And as primitive as it sounds, uh, we were actually, I think 90, almost 98% of our suppliers were uh, on check, were used to get paid by check. So that meant that we had to cut the checks, mail them out, and then of course deal with the kind of painful as treatment process at the back end, right? So now um, invoice pay steps in and things are a lot simpler. So first of all, um, uh, it is that so what what really happens now is we have 
once we have approved the suppliers, uh, approved the payments, we still get to decide what to pay when. But once we've approved it, it's uh, invoice pay kicks in and we don't have to do anything with payments and it's almost magical how suppliers get paid. Right? And a little bit of background uh, on how this worked out is that one of the first things that uh, happens during the enablement process is uh, that the JP Morgan and OSV together, they do a thorough review of the supplier payment file. So what happened in our case was, like I said, we were all a, we were primarily a check payer, but because of the magic sauce, right, they were able to identify suppliers that were ideal candidates for the SUA, which is a single use access card, as well as ACH. And um, again, all that happened behind the scenes, very little, uh, in, very little uh, effort needed from us. But now we are at a point where, again, moving from almost check to now our most of our suppliers getting paid by ACH and um, um, most importantly, SUA. So that's really how, how things work. So this is great. Thank you for that. And, and I can almost feel many of our guests nodding their heads saying, yeah, we're on paper checks and we're trying to get away from paper checks. Give us a solution. So thank you for that. Now, the solution that's powered by JP Morgan that's offered through one source virtual is invoice pay plus supplier management. So how does supplier management services fit in? Right. So supplier management is basically everything that you need to help supplier get suppliers set up. Okay, and then update. So let me talk about it. So anytime you have a new supplier, there's a lot that goes into the setting up process, right? So you need W9s, you have to make sure the W9 confirms with the IRS rules and also confirms to whatever internal controls processes that you may have at your end. So uh, all that is now taken care of by OSV. Also, anytime it happens all the time, but you have a supplier that has an address change, a name change, a payment type change. So again, that's that's a process and that requires multiple steps and reviews. So all that is taken care of OSV. Now, again, the final formal review still sits with the customer, right? With me, which is how I want it, right? Uh, at the same time, all the work is uh, taken care of. Good, excellent, that's fantastic. Thank you for that, Prerna. Now, in addition to benefiting from this service as a company, OSV is also offering uh, this service, uh, Invoice Pay Plus Supplier Management, to our present and future customers. John, uh, if you wouldn't mind, tell us, it, it, among our many services and products, how is Invoice Pay unique or special? Uh, unique would be a good, good question. If you think about pay, so we do pay, everyone knows we do payroll. We do $100 billion a year of payroll. In the size of the companies that we're talking about, companies big enough to be on Workday, there's just a handful of payroll providers. But when you talk about accounts payable, I don't think I'm exaggerating. There's at least many dozens, if not hundreds, of companies out there that are doing AP, AP automate the claim, they're doing AP automation, invoice management, supplier management, treasury services, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, personally, just because of my title as CFO, I get two or three emails a week from companies pitching it. What's different about this is a couple of things. So first of all, we do, I think I already said this, we do $100 billion of money movement on the payroll side. So we were able to take that scale, those economies of scale, and we have with JP Morgan, I know Greg's gonna talk about it, and we're able to use that on the AP side. There's nobody who moves $100 billion of accounts payable, period. There just isn't as a service provider. There's some company, Walmart does, but there's no service providers that do that. So the economies of scale we get in the pricing and the interchange rebates and the service levels and everything else that goes with that is just completely different than what anybody else can do. The more important piece, I would argue, is that every other guy out there, every other person out there, every other fly-by-night operation out there has a separate piece of software. We are doing this uh, completely inside Workday. And I know a lot of guys are going to say, well, we've got it. We've got a, we, it's an easy integration. It's a two step setup. It's a, you just give us a feed or we, you know, we have one system of record and it's your Workday system of record. So you don't have to have a pipe. You never have to ask the question of, well, well wait, is this, has this been paid yet? Because that's one of the worst things. You get someone blowing up saying, we're about to cut you off because you weren't paid and you don't know. And then you have to go to this third party provider and ask. The system of record is Workday. 
There's no pipe, there's no feed, there's nothing. We work inside your workday tenant. And it's the only solution out there that's like that, where you don't have to work, you know, log into a separate system or call somebody up and say, wasn't this paid? We, it's right there inside. And so what we have done for Workday Payroll for the last decade is what we're now doing for Workday AP on the financial side. And if you like Workday, this is really the only solution you would want to do because otherwise you're going to have to be buying another platform or at least integrating with another platform. That to me is the two, the, really the two biggest uh, differentiators about this one and everybody else. So you definitely got my attention now. I think this is definitely a unique offering. Um, how, how did how did this relationship with OSV and JP Morgan materialize? There's got to be a backstory here, John. Tell us your perspective and and how how we got together with JP Morgan. Yeah. Well, again, I, I think I said this, you know they 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 have been our bank for quite some time. They're the largest bank in the United States, of course, and they have been doing our payroll and our payroll taxes and benefits and you know a lot of the other services that we do. We had been thinking about this as a service offering for what we could do for Workday Financials customers, just like we have a full suite of products for Workday HCM customers. And so they had pitched us to that and they introduced us to Greg. I remember it was about this time last year because it was Lent. And Greg, uh, you know, yeah, Greg couldn't eat or drink anything. Uh, I gave I gave up rollerblading for Lent, which is a lot easier. I've been doing that for the last thirty years, so it's an easy give. Um, but when we, you know, we first brought this idea to, get, well, it is, it, it's an easy. You, you want to make you, look if you're going to give something up for Lent, make sure it's something you can stick with for forty days. But so anyway, no, and we, you know, we just brought these ideas together. And the the beautiful thing about it is we we're already set up. With JP Morgan, with JP Morgan Chase to impound money and remit money for payroll and payroll taxes. So this was just simply enabling it for financials, and it was it, it was just an obvious choice, to be honest with you. So just a disclaimer that John's uh, religious calendar recommendations are not endorsed by one source virtual. Hey, Greg, do you have anything to add to uh, to, to John's backstory <laughs> on the relationship between OSV and JP Morgan? Sure. Well, first, just to clarify, I didn't give up drinking and eating because, like, I wouldn't be alive at this point. But uh, I did give up drinking in general, and I've got one or two days left on that. But um, no, it, it was. It, it's been a great partnership, and you know, J.P. Morgan. When we work with companies, we look to service all of their needs, from credit to to payments to strategic and and lots of different things. So it was a natural conversation that came up. You know. What are you trying to do with your business? How are you trying to, to sort of future proof yourself? And uh, through those conversations, we got into the whole payment space. And, and as I said earlier, you know, there's nothing more exciting than helping a company achieve its long term goals and not only driving efficiency in its operations, but also helping, you know, to drive top line, bottom line and, and deepen customer relationships and add value. It's, it's all about adding value at the end of the day. Um, you know, John mentioned, you know, largest bank in, in, in the country. We, we process about $7 trillion a day, a day, right? You know, so talk about scale. We've got scale. Our investment budget, uh, which is a public number, is $12 billion a year. That's what we spend on tech. We've got over 50,000 developers, more than Google and Microsoft, like, combined. So tech is is what we do where I don't want to say that we're just a really large fintech, but in a way we are because technology is at the forefront of it and the investments that we continue to make in our platforms to deliver stability, which is critical to, to our clients and to, to continue to deliver what are the latest payments, you know, faster payments is a great example. Everything that we have in our consumer life, which allows us to settle, you know, near real time now, well, that didn't exist on on the business to business side. We now lead the market. Real time payments is one of the the payment rails offered through this service. We're now doing 10 million transactions a month, and have a 97 percent market share, and and that's because of the investments in all the downstream technology, going from batch systems to real time. You can just uh, imagine how deep that was, but it's our clients such as OSV and then your, their clients who ultimately are the beneficiaries of all of that. Yeah, very, very good. Well, it is a privilege uh, on behalf of OSV to be teaming up with you to offer this really a game changing solution. Now, it's even in our title of our webinar here, the savings and rebates uh, amounting to six figures a year 
in virtually every case that we've looked at. I, I want to talk about this for just a minute. And Greg, let me pitch this first to you. We talk about savings and rebates, but these are actually two different streams. So help help us understand what are these two different streams? What are the savings and then what are the rebates? Sure. Well, one of the things that, that we do with clients and it's, and it's available through the offering and the partnership with, with the OSV is we try to look at what is a client's current state, and Frida talked about this, like what was the before state and then what was the after state, and and show what that differential can look like. And if you're primarily a, a check shop today, or even if you've got a fair amount of ACH, there's still a lot of that check payments that can be converted over to either ACH or, or card. So we will take a look at the, uh, at the supplier uh, analytics. So we'll, we'll take a look at all the suppliers, run it through our analytics, identify which, you know, suppliers we may be able to, to electronify. And then we run an economic model to, to showcase what are the operational savings, because checks are obviously more expensive than electronic payments. So there's operational savings from moving from check to electronic. And then there's rebate savings. And rebates are basically a, a sharing of the interchange that a supplier pays, right, to accept that transaction, that money goes to the bank, we share it with OSV, and OSV shares it back with their clients. And in many cases, or, or actually in all cases, it's a material number, meaning that it's proportional to your size. It's always going to be meaningful. And um, so delivering that level of value is, is, what, is what really drives the whole solution. Thank you for that, Greg. Really helpful information. Uh, yeah, I, I, John, is there anything you would add to the difference between these two streams? Anything else you'd like to emphasize? Yeah, I, the, the thing on savings, and so there's what I would say is you have to be careful between what's the difference between the headline and the actual. So there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, I'll print checks for a dime, or I'll print checks you know, for, for 20 cents, or that might be your own internal cost that you're getting from, from, from your bank. And then on the other side, you'll see these studies that say, oh, the average, you know, check costs $9 to process or $12. People look at that and they, they discount it. Well, that's the actual hard cost. It's not just the printing and, you know, 59 cents or whatever a stamp costs nowadays. It's the cost behind it to move all that paper. And so JP Morgan, and I don't know if Greg said this, but JP Morgan's got the largest payment network out there of suppliers, you know, your, your coffee's from your coffee supplier to FedEx and UPS and et cetera, et cetera, and knows their banking numbers, their ACH routing numbers, knows whether they take a single use credit card or what you call a virtual card. They know that so they can get the highest penetration or conversion from that piece of paper to an electronic payment. Again, whether it's an ACH or same day, you know, real time payment or it's a single use credit card, they'll get that highest conversion. And so when you think, well, it's only cost me 20 cents to, for a check and 50 cents, some odd cents to mail it. The cost of that is really a lot higher. And again, most of the studies out there, you see nine, 10, $11. So that one is, is what's important. The other thing I would say on the rebates, who's got the biggest network of conversion and every bank out there knows who accepts Visa and MasterCard. JP Morgan's got the biggest network of who is accepting right now, who's accepting payments for uh, B2B payments, you know, your, your, your corporate AP who's accepting Visa and MasterCard right now. So you're gonna get a much higher conversion rate and that's where you generate these rebates. The final thing I'll say is there's, a, if you're with on any other platform, besides Workday, there's a, there's a hidden integration cost. And you may not you may not think about it, but when Workday refreshes every six months, or your third party supplier refreshes, you've got to redo those integrations. You've got to update. You've got to test them, et cetera, et cetera. This is the only one that works inside Workday, and Workday's you know procure to pay and AP modules are, are are gorgeous. They really are. It's a, it's very elegant, and so there's also this third party cost that you're just not going to incur if you do this inside Workday with one source. Good, yeah, John. John I, I want to stay with you. Go go ahead, Greg. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to build on that point because there's certainly a lot of value in the solution itself, and, and we see that whenever we talk to any client. But one of the things that holds clients up is, is the integration because it's IT resources, it's, it's time, effort, et cetera. But with your solution, the intent, as, as you refer to it, there is no in integration. Right. Um, you know, so that, that's a huge 
obstacle that exists when we work directly with clients. How do we integrate into their ERP and all that sort of stuff in the file and testing is it? But with your solution, you're already in the ERP. So I would agree that that is a, a really, really big differentiator uh, of what you can offer versus going with any other provider outside of Workday. And we've mentioned this in-tenant capability. Let me just expand on this just real briefly before John, I continue to talk about these six-figure savings and rebates. So uh, OneSource Virtual actually has a patent with Workday to work inside of our customer's application, inside of our customer's tenant. And no one else in the Workday ecosystem can brag about a patent. Uh, it's not just proprietary technology. It's actually patented technology. I do think I'm the only one at OneSource Virtual who knows our patent number but I can share that. It's a very public thing. Uh, so thank you for pointing all of that out, both John and Greg. And John, let me stick with you for just a second. Really sounds too good to be true, right? Uh, you sign up for our solution and then we're gonna give you back six figures every year in savings and in rebates. Uh, does this really only apply to maybe a, a few companies? Is this the very large enterprise companies or do we really anticipate that this is going to apply almost universally to Workday yeah, customers? It, it, it really does apply almost universally. Uh, when I first heard this, and, and this is before Greg and his team had reached out to OneSource, when I first heard these, and I've been hearing these pitches the last three, four, five years of how you're going to convert all these customers to accept single-use credit cards, I was pretty skeptical as to who was going to take it. I mean, to be frank, we don't take credit cards at OneSource. To, to, for our accounts receivable. And I was a little bit skeptical and we went through our list and we've done that with several of our customers, like the real accounts payable. And I'm, you know, you, you pr be pretty shocked. Almost every food service provider you have out there, they'll accept a credit card. Almost all technology providers out there will. Uh, uh, virtually every transportation provider out there will. Um, you know, it, it basically, I don't say basically, but, but it, aside from your landlord, uh, almost everybody will take credit cards and it's, it's, it's a pretty big penetration. Our number is already, uh, exceeding what I, what I thought. I mean, the amount of rebates that we're getting, the people that are accepting, I, I, I personally was quite surprised at it. Greg, anything to add to this? Yeah, I would, I would say that there are a couple of things. There are certainly lots of companies who accept card today and, and, and Prina made the point that, you know, just because you accept Visa or MasterCard doesn't mean that you're going to accept it for the business to business. A lot of companies accept consumer payments. Business to business is a little different. So understanding who does and who, and who doesn't is really important in the targeting. Um, but many of those companies who do accept, they've already built that cost into their business model. Like you're already paying for it, but not getting the benefit of, of that. So um, and we, we will even look at companies who are accepting via ACH, many of them accept via card too. So we, we look at check and, and convert that to, to, to card and we'll actually look at some of the ACH and convert that too. Um, and then there's a couple of industries who simply don't like banks, like you can't pay your loan with a credit card, like that, that just doesn't work, right? You know, so, so we go through a pretty good scrubbing of what are the industries where it, you know, government payments, they're, they're not gonna accept card, you know, so we, we exclude those and then we target those industries who do tend to, and then there's a, a, a very strong reach out to, to those suppliers, which we do on, on your behalf. And then we actually build in a continuous recruitment so that every, every month that, you know, you may be having new suppliers coming on board as we see them, we'll, we'll go and try to recruit them also. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and let me also say for those who are uh, joining us today on this webinar, that OneSource Virtual will do that audit for free for you. We will go through your invoices, go through your suppliers, and we will do that audit for free for you and then show you the actual numbers before you ever have to, you know, sign up for these services and this solution. So it's an offering. Just get in touch with us. We'll be happy to do so. Perrin, I want to come back to you. Make sure you're off mute, unlike I did earlier. Um, you've been using the solution already internally. What other benefits have you seen? Uh, Jeff, quite a few, right? So first of all, we were, I've said this several times, we were able to get off checks. 
And you've heard uh, both Greg and John talk about, you know, the obvious stuff. Everybody knows there's no accountant or there's no controller that does not realize that checks are expensive, right? But uh, at the same time, getting off checks is a process. It's a process. It's an undertaking that most people, I mean, I'll give you my example on, you know, we all have day jobs and just doing that on your, on your own, it's pretty time consuming and, and not to say there's no assurance on the conversion rate that you don't know how many, and then just the process of having to call suppliers yourself, you know, um, not, not a fun process. So I'm super excited as much as we wanted to do this for a while. This, uh, this is ex the invoice pay is really what got us there. So we're off checks now. Um, we our suppliers are happy or they get paid, you know, if you they're getting paid by a credit card, they get paid a lot faster. Uh, one, one thing that worked out well was, uh, during COVID, right? People have had to suppliers no longer have to go to the offices to collect checks. So that's, that's been great. No checks getting lost in the mail. Um. A little bit stuff there, and then uh, we were not really using a supplier portal earlier. Um, so that's another added feature. Uh, suppliers have access to the JP Morgan Chase portal where they can log in. Now, of course, um, you know, as a customer, if you're using the Workday portal, you still can get to do that because Workday continues to be the system of record. But that's that's another you know option available, the JP Morgan uh, supplier portal. And then um, I think one of the other things was uh, it, it, it's it's. It's uh, the whole AP process, right? It's not rocket science. It's pretty simple. At the same time, it's recurring. It takes a lot of time and effort. So the fact that we were able to take off a lot of work from our plate and you know give it to OSP frees up time for my internal resources to take up more critical stuff, right? Um, or it could result in, um, I mean, for other customers, of course, a no brainer, it could result in FTE savings itself, right? So that's that. And then um, in very important fraud protection, right? So I'm an ex auditor um, and, and having been in industry, I'll, I'll be honest, there's been a few scares. Uh, anytime somebody thinks ACH or credit cards, one of the things is, oh, what about fraud? So um, one key thing is fraud protection is all offered as part of the service. So that should that that's a big relief to me personally. And um and then um the other thing was just you know going back to wanting to do this but not having done it uh it, it was really because I was a little concerned about the process, right? How how much work will that mean for my team, for myself? But it was the process was completely seamless, and and this is me being very honest. Uh, and, um, and even as an offering, it's supposed to be a start to finish six to eight week process. So that that really helped us out. It was it would require very little of our time. So again, the the cost benefit or the investment benefit is huge. And then uh, last but not the least, of course, the rebate dollars, right? So we've all been talking about savings and, and rebates. So uh, proud, I'm pretty excited that we're internally are gonna hit that uh, six figure mark. So the conversion rate has been pretty fantastic. Again, going in, I wasn't quite sure what our supplier base looked like, right? And, and what that conversion would be, but here we are. So we're excited and I'm sure uh, it, it's always great when a cost center starts generating revenue, right? So I hope that makes my CFO happy. <laughs> <laughs> we can probably find that out pretty quick for you. Thank you, Prana, that's great. And you mentioned some of your hesitations ahead of time, like, you know, change. Nobody necessarily likes change. I want to spend uh, our final uh, planned time before we get to your questions. Make sure you're dialing in your questions in the chat. Those of you who have joined us on this live webinar. Uh, John, let's talk about hesitations and objections. What are you hearing from our future customers? And then how would you how would you answer those hesitations? Yeah, you know, the, the biggest one really is inertia. Uh, I, I don't know any other better way to describe it. It's because you, you, they're comfortable with their current setup. Um, and again, it doesn't take a lot of work to, but it, other than some contract negotiations and telling your current provider, if you have one that you're moving, but a nurse is probably uh, the biggest one. And, and really a lot of people that are in our roles that are in the finance or the accounting team aren't really used to generating revenue or aren't really used to 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 actually having a negative expense which you might have I'll, I'll explain negative expense here in a second but one that where you know they're just not used to that and they're often not in that mindset 
And the, the thing I would say, and we've, we've seen this with a couple of customers that I can't quite name yet, that when we took their real AP file and bounced it off the real JP Morgan, you know, like trailing 12 months AP file and bounced it off JP Morgan's network, the amount of rebates back to them was going to exceed the entire cost of their workday FINS license. So you might be on something else, some inferior platform like NetSuite or Dynamics and looking to upgrade to Workday Fins if you're already on Workday, you know, HCM or just looking at it fresh and quite literally using this platform would actually pay for your Workday license. And it was really, really powerful. It's like eye opening when you see that. It's really powerful. And so while there'll be some inertia to change, it's hard to, to, to bypass what is essentially free or actually a quote unquote negative expense if something's coming back to you. Definitely. Greg, what else would you add as far as hesitations or objections and how you would maybe answer them? Well, I, at the, I mentioned earlier, you know, the implementation or the, the integration, getting access to IT resources has, is often one of our clients' biggest challenges, but that issue comes off the table here because the integration with, with Workday is already done. So to, to me, that's the biggest uh, hurdle. And, and that one's kind of eliminated already. Uh, I would definitely agree with John. Inertia is is always a you know it it, it takes effort. Like don't expect change, but not that it's going to require zero work, right? Of course, there's going to be some work, but you know what what I see from the seat that I sit in is that Treasury and and accounts payable et, et cetera, they're all being challenged to how do you add value in the current environment. And you know we talked about COVID a tiny bit, and, and yes, it was real that you you know companies couldn't get into the office to print checks, and it's real that the mail is slower today than than it was previously before COVID, and you have to have contingencies in place. And how do you just move to a digital environment? You know, so it's it's you know, what are the issues that, that each have within your own organization and how can you demonstrate that you're adding value? And this is really a great way to do that, to, to make yourself look like a hero because it's actually pretty straightforward and easy. You can add bottom line value to your organization and you, you eliminate, you know, some operational failure points because everything's integrated into the platform. So a lot of the um, objections that we see outside of you know an intended solution are, are actually you know eliminated through through this uh, platform osv's platform yeah fantastic uh printer john anything to finally add before i turn it back over to brooke brooke's been monitoring the chat and we definitely have some questions that are coming in and we're going to get to those anything to add before we turn it back over to brooke and we look at those questions yeah, I think Jeff, I'll agree, right? Again, as a customer, uh, you know, me personally, I was pretty vested, super excited about it. But when I shared it with my team, it, it, there, there will always be that initial hesitation, right? Because change is hard, and, and and I think a lot of it is ignorance, right? Not realizing how simple the integration is, the whole the value of uh, us being in workday, not requiring a separate in integration. All that is huge. So I think the key thing is to always remember the big picture, right? And the benefits that come with it and not let that whatever. I mean, I think it took us what maybe 10 hours of my team's time in total during the enablement process. Um, and so that's that's nothing, you know, a lot, most of the heavy lifting is all of it is done by uh, OSV and JP Morgan. So I, I can tell you that my team is also very happy that we did this. Yep. And John, finally, anything from you before we, uh, and you're on mute, there we go. Anything to add before we turn it over to uh, to Brooke with the questions from our guests? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm excited to see what Brooke has. That's great. Brooke, um, yeah, why don't you come off mute and join us on camera, Brooke, and uh, share a little bit about some of what our uh, our guests, our attendees have been saying in the chat with their questions, Rick. Oh man, Jeff, you called me out on sharing the camera as well. Jeez, okay. Well, thank you guys. I do see a lot of questions coming in. Just a reminder, please enter them in via the chat feature. Um, this first one is for you, John. We have someone wondering if they have to change banks and then a follow-up, um, what do we have to do to obtain those rebates? Yeah, uh, good question. No, you absolutely positively do not need to change banks. I'm sure Greg would love for you to change banks, but you absolutely positively don't have to. And the, and I'll just say you're with uh, 
can I say BAM? I'll just say you're with Bank of America, just hypothetically, Greg somebody's with Bank of America. Right now, you might be doing a thousand ACH or a thousand check or a thousand outbound payments a month for accounts payable. What this would look like is you'd have one payment to one source. We'd impound it. We, I don't know if we're on your payroll, but if we're doing your payroll, but it's just like payroll, we typically impound it on Wednesday night and then we'll do a thousand ACHs to a thousand employees on Friday morning. This will be exactly the same. We'll pull that money, and that won't be necessarily be on Wednesday, but we'll pull that money periodically, whether it's once a week or every day or you know, bi-weekly, however you want to, semi-monthly, however you want to set up your AP, we'll pull that. You'll have one outbound cost, by the way, one wire, one ACH to us, and then we disperse it. And you'll get all the remittance advice. You'll know exactly who got paid, how they got paid. It's going to be loaded back into Workday, so you'll know how it happened. And really what it is, you can keep your current bank and instead of a thousand little outbounds, we're gonna have one big outbound to us and we'll handle all the, the thousand little ones. Oh, and it was, you said there's a question of how do you get the rebates? All, it, it really is, JP Morgan goes through that, that, that outbound file of who your suppliers are. There's a good chunk of them are already set up to accept credit cards. Some of them are gonna need a phone call saying, hey, what you used to get from Acme Brick is in, in via an ACH or check is now going to come via the single use credit card. And then you'll get volume rebates back back based upon the people that, that accept a single use card. So um, there's, there's, there's basically nothing else that you have to do uh, <laughs> at that point. We say it's set it and forget it. I mean, th there may be some questions that come in occasionally, but that's about it. All right. Excellent. Thank you, John. And this one's kind of similar learning. You definitely don't have to change banks. Um, we have someone who's asked the question. They currently have a corporate card program with JP Morgan with a rebate plan. So would this service be an addition or cause any issue with that? And that one's uh, my you, Greg or John. Yeah, my, my guess is this would be in addition. So typically those corporate card programs or, and I don't know the exact details here. Often they're T&E, you know, travel and expense ones where you got a physical card in there. Sometimes there's a virtual card when the office manager needs to order something. Um, unless it's the full blown JP Morgan accounts payable program, that invoice pay program that we're talking about here, this would probably almost certainly be added to it. I still might argue that this is going to be easier, even if you are doing that, because we'll, we'll do this inside Workday for you and you don't have to, if you're already on Workday, and take that as an assumption. Anybody on this call is already on Workday or is looking at Workday. This really is the easiest thing. I don't. There's no hyperbole. This really is the easiest thing you could do, um, and you won't have to maintain any integrations because we're going to do because we're because we're inside your tenant. Yeah, and I would I would just add to that. I think John makes a, a very good point that if you've got a, a, a T and E card or a purchasing card program. This would be incremental to that, meaning that this targets electronic invoice payments, accounts payable payments, as opposed to, you know, walk around plastic. So they are two discrete programs from that perspective. Um, and if you already do have a single use account program with JP Morgan, it's, 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 you know, it's ultimately, we will support you if you want to work directly with us. Of course, we support OSV if you want to work through them. We're, we're somewhat neutral to it, and then it's for you to determine what's the value that you can get out of, uh, out of the, the, the solution there. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, John. Um, this next question is for Perna. So does the supplier management service take care of 1099 reporting um, with the suppliers and the IRS? No, that's a, that's it. It does not. Customers are really responsible for us, uh, still responsible for doing their own 1099 reporting. And um, at the same time, anything that's true for anything that goes out or the, with the payment type that's not an SUA card. So, but to the extent something's being paid through an SUA uh, through a credit card, then the banks are really responsible for that. So that's a 1099k reporting. So that's not on your plate anymore as a customer, but the regular stuff is. Now, that being said, I know OSV offers a separate service for the 1099 processing. So, yes, that can be taken care of, but not, not as part of this service. Excellent. Thank you, Perna. Um, this next one is probably for Greg and then John. Um, so, what does JP Morgan do to assist companies in waylaying the fees associated with accepting credit card payments? 
Uh, if the, the question is, sounds like it's related to the suppliers that you're paying. So uh, JP Morgan has a subsidiary or, or a part of its organization, not a subsidiary, it's part of our organization called Chase Merchant Services. And we're actually the only bank which has a, a merchant services or an acquiring arm that we own and operate, um, you, you know, proprietarily. So we can work with uh, different suppliers on the cost of acceptance and the likes of that. Now, there's always a cost to accept, um, you, you know, credit card payments. There's the interchange, which the associations charge, and then there's the acquiring fee, which is the, the acquirer helps you sort of take in that card payment. So we can work with suppliers on that front. Um, but the other piece, which I think is really important, and it was talked about a couple of times, is that JP Morgan provides resources uh, to actually go out and recruit suppliers to accept either a single use account payment, which is a virtual card payment, or ACH. And, you know, so we'll reach out, we'll call them, we'll get them on the phone, we'll send them emails, and then direct them back to a portal, a supplier portal, where they can either sign up for accepting a virtual card payment or enter in their, their DDA information if they want to receive an ACH payment. They could even put in rules as to, well, if the if the payment is less than X amount, then I'll accept card. If it's over that, I'll, I'll accept ACH. You know, so we spent a lot of time focused on the supplier because at the end of the day, if the supplier doesn't see value, everything falls apart. There is no adoption. And the way that we're able to get so much adoption is by understanding the supplier's needs and providing the tools and access and the financials that, go, that help to meet their needs. And, and this process really streamlines, streamlines it for the supplier and provides them all of the reconciliation that they need to settle those transactions also. Excellent. All right, the next question is really relating, um, maybe a couple of industries apparently um, use, says that a consulting and engineering firm does not usually benefit from a rebate as the industry payment standard method um, is usually with a sub consultant. So I guess there's a kind of a portion there where they have somebody who they contract out to pay. Um, the other trade vendors volume and value is generally lower. So I think the question here um, from Hector is, is really how will companies specifically in the engineering industry or other fields like this benefit from a rebate program? I, I'll take that. I mean, if, if you, if, so we're similar in a way. So our biggest cost for one source for, for for our company, our biggest cost is our own people. It's not subcontractors, but it's similar. You're not going to pay payroll via credit card. So, and again, when I think I said this 30 minutes ago, when JP Morgan first pitched this, I thought our numbers would be pretty low. I mean, 80, 85% of our cost is actually our own people's payroll, which is not subject to this. And the 1099s or a subcontractor or the other engineering firms, your, your subs would also not be applicable here, generally would not be applicable. That universe that's left, and there's always a universe of suppliers that are left, um, would be what we would be targeting. Now, the suppliers out there that you have, the subcontractors, we could still do the ACH with them still have the economies of scale, I think, uh, on, around the ACH and the reduced cost of it. And we can still take your AP from dozens or hundreds or thousands of little checks or ACHs to one payment to us and the cost that's associated with that. And then we would you know, handle your entire file. And the other thing I would say, you would be surprised at who takes a credit card. I think you would be really surprised at who takes a credit card. I think some of those subcontractors would actually take a credit card. Now it might be for lower dollar amounts, Greg, they might say, well, I only do it for 10,000 or less. Um, I mean, I'm personally quite, granted you have a subcontractor who's taking a credit card in the accounting space. And I was shocked to hear that, but they are right. Now, Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. we, we have um, settled single transactions on a card for over a million dollars. You know, so yes, you would be surprised as as to who's who's taking it and and for how much. Um, and and I guess my answer to that, which is very similar to yours, John, is look, even if seventy percent of your expense it, you can't touch, well, does that mean you ignore the other thirty percent? No, you should still be optimizing it, and there's still value to be created there. And to your point, yeah, you'd be surprised at what that value could be. 
Definitely. Sounds like the supplier network has a lot of extensive benefits just to the volume you work with and some of these surprising solutions. Um, so the next question is, is probably aimed at John here. Um, people asking about the pro fraud prevention process, specifically if somebody changes their ACH inf info. Um, so what are some of the safeguards we have for that information? I think that one might be better geared for prayer. And she probably is closest to that. Um, and, and Greg as well. Yeah, and I, I think the ACH, I think the key thing is you're still as a customer still responsible for approving everything right now at the same time, if there is a bad actor, then uh, there's always ways to stop the ACH and get your money back. And I think, Greg, you can add add to that, right? You can always reverse it. Um, and this happens with with bank payments all the time. There's there's a uh, fraud protection there, but um, yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that we have built into this application is a authentication service. So we, we work through a company called Early Warning Services where we will take that bank account, usually the first time that we see it, and run it up against their database to see is it an open account? And we could go as far as to, you know, who who's the owner of that account. So there's a validation service that we put in front of this. It doesn't alleviate that, you know, you should still go and check and make sure, you know, validate, et cetera. But we do put that extra layer of security on top of it. And we continue, we're continuing to enhance that to add more and more validation services just to increase the accuracy of that. Yeah, and just, just, just to be clear, when it's a single use credit card, there, there's 100% fraud protection. There's 100% fraud protection on a single use credit card. And on the ACH, if we get fished, so your team at one source virtual, if we get fished and we fall for it, that's on us. You know, that that's we we are giving you fraud protection on that. It it'd have to be to be blind, it would have to almost be an internal fraud at someone else in your company changing a file and rerouting an ACH. Um, and Greg, you weren't as forthright, I mean you weren't as uh bravado about this, but we've seen it on the payroll side with your bank where somebody um, had their own account, was fit, an individual employee was fished, and you came back and said, no, John Doe does not match this. Um, and so, yeah. you know, so you, you don't, you don't jump up and down and say, you've got a hundred percent matching, but, but you match the name on the bank account to the ACH routing number. It's, it's pretty hard to, to, to get that you know, off. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's fair. And, and you're right. We do a lot behind the scenes in our operations group because we have artificial intelligence. We're looking at trends all the time. And I would say for everybody on this phone, if you ever get a call from a bank that says, you know what, this payment looks suspect, even though your CFO said, go make it, we, we want you to double check it. Call the CFO and or, or whoever it is and double check. I can't tell you. I've personally seen people say, "Oh no, no, it's good, it's good," and then two hours later, "Oh, can you get the money back?" Well, it's in China right now, you know. So listen to those calls. It's for your benefit, and we do a lot behind the scenes to protect our clients, of which all of you would benefit from too. So I think uh, so Greg, it's fair to say it's a combination of controls that there has to be some controls at the customer's end as well, which in these days, everybody's thanks to everything that's happened. The, most customers are pretty savvy about these phishing attempts. Uh, yeah. Excellent. All right. Thank you all. And we only have time for a few more questions, but I'll just tell everyone if you're still um, having questions or comments, continue to enter them into the chat. If we don't get to them live today, we will follow up and make sure that we get some answers to your questions. So why don't we end with this last one? We've had quite a few people asking about cost, um, time to implement, kind of what to do from here if the answer is that they want to sign up. Um, so kind of um, Perna, maybe walk us through the process. Is there a way for people to get a custom business case? And then how easy is it if you're already a Workday customer to click go and, and turn on this benefit and these features? Again, it was it was super easy, and I think John can talk about the cost aspect of it, right? But as a, as it was super easy. All like I said, all they did they needed was access to our 
supplier master file and it's not something that we had to download and provide they were able to get into our workday tenant and and get all that information so that's that's all it was and then uh like i said then the, the whole onboarding process starts from the jp morgan side where they start call making calls or you know they know even before making calls or having to do any work that hey we know for a fact that these suppliers accept credit cards so that's that's a no brainer but again there was barely any work uh, from our end other than just getting on a few calls to answer questions and, and things like that. Excellent. Uh, a few push on, a, on a, maybe a couple of suppliers. Okay. Excellent. And, and then, John, I know there's probably a lot of customizations and specifics dealing with every company, but do we do a custom business case where we can let somebody know exactly what their savings could be if, if they yeah. decide to look at this? Yeah. And, and generally speaking, I would normally hate the answer I'm about to give when someone says, what does it cost? And I, and the answer is, it depends. And I, I hate that answer normally, except this one, it really is. We need to look at, at your AP file. It's a very easy process. When you look at your AP file and just see what the mix is and how big it is. And I'll exaggerate, but if you, if your payments are just to AT&T and waste management or Republic for the, for the trash behind your store, that's gold. You're in great shape. We're going to be cutting you a check every month. But if you have a you know thousands of small payments to subcontractors or to, to to drivers or something like that, then then it's it's going to be a different number. But it's really easy to to do. We just take the AP file, and JP Morgan will bounce it off of their database, and we can come back to you pretty quickly. And it, again, it really depends on what that mix is. I don't I don't like giving the answer of it depends. I'll just say we'll turn it. We can turn it around real fast. And, and sometimes the answer is it depends. So we'll, we'll take that one. All right. Well, um, out of respect for everyone's time, we are nearly at the top of the hour. So just again, we'll we'll make sure to follow up if we didn't get to your question live. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and, and close out for now. Um, we hope this discussion continues. Tarita, I know you've got some information here about some other ways that you can um, contact us. Um, so just a reminder, you know, for more ways. Um, more information on ways you can make your day more doable. Here's our website and social media channels to follow, including our newest podcast, Unrealized. Um, so be sure to check that out. And as you think of questions for the service, please don't hesitate to contact us via the contact us section on our website. Um, so again, thank you all uh, panelists for a dynamic conversation and for um, a wonderful solution we've discussed today. So um, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. Thank sure. you.